Hey everybody, let's talk about the nature of progress in video games. Most games are built around the idea of making progress. If you are playing an FPS, you're making progress through the FPS. First you cross the bridge, then you fight the zombies, then you jump through the waterfall, and then you fight the Vampire King. These things happen in a specific order, and the game tries very hard to convince you that that order is meaningful. It uses narrative, challenges, resources, level design to tell you that the thing you're doing is moving forward. Your progress is meaningful. If you do that, then you can sort of control the player's experience very, very easily, very uh, effectively. You know where they're coming from, you know where they're going to, uh, you know how they got here, you know what they think, because you're dictating all of that. So in that way, the player's experience is predictable and you can make the most of it. This isn't just limited to FPSs, of course. We've also got things like uh, a farming game. If you're in a farming game, progress, well, that's a bigger field and a more expensive harvester combine, right? And the game understands that these things are progress. You can tell right away by looking at the prices on the vehicles. This combine is 10,000, that combine is 50,000, because the 50,000 one is further ahead. It takes more progress to reach. Once again, you're moving through the game in a specific order because the game is telling you that that is the order that makes sense. That is the order that has meaning. But this isn't the only approach you can take, and I'm going to teach you a different one just so that you have it in your tool belt. The House of Cards approach, or House of Cards mechanics. Let's, uh, let's start with Kerbal. If you're new here, Kerbal is a rocket building game where you build rockets and you go into space. It's considered pretty hardcore, and uh, when it started, it was just sandbox mode. You had all the parts, everything was unlocked. You could do whatever you wanted. As time passed, they had more modes, uh, including a, uh, a career mode. Career mode has a forward vector. There's a progress to be had there. Uh, you want money? Here's more money. You want to earn more money? Here's how. You want more science points? Here's how to earn more science points. You want more Kerbals? Here's how to earn more Kerbals. You want more city? Here's how to unlock more city. You want more parts? Here's how to unlock more parts. The problem is that Kerbal was never built to be like that, so it chafes. And very few people enjoy playing career mode for very long. This is something that happens simply because the rules of Kerbal are built around the sandbox mode. It's just how the mechanics are set up. It, uh, it doesn't really fit into something that's a little bit more directed. If you're in sandbox mode, you're using House of Cards mechanics. Let me uh, give you some examples. If I want to go to the fourth moon of Jewel, that's this one here, then I'm the one who's responsible for building a rocket to do that. I have to build a rocket that reaches orbit, transfers orbit, gets a captured, stable orbit, drops off its toy, the, the drone. Oh shoot, did I forget to put a battery on the drone? Oh crap. I just knocked over my own house of cards. Now to, what do I do? Do I rewind? Do I start over? Do I try and do the mission without a battery? Whatever happens, it happens because I bit off more than I could chew. This is self-directed gaming, and this is one way to try and push self-directed gaming to have more meaning. My personal progression through Kerbal is different from yours, but both of us have a progression through Kerbal that has meaning. It's just that instead of the game providing that meaning, we're doing it in our own heads. Oh, that's a really ugly person. Let's try that again. Ah, uh, I can't draw anymore. We're doing it inside of our own heads. So that means that uh, all of the meaning to our progress is being forged by us inside of our own minds and at the pace we prefer. Kerbal in sandbox mode has no concept that certain missions might happen earlier or later or that there might be certain progressions. It's just a stack of rules and a map. And you can do whatever you want. I'm not going to say Kerbal is great about this. There are some serious problems with it, especially in the early game. But this is an example of House of Cards mechanics. Kerbal basically just gives you this loose jumble of cards and says, yeah, here, these are all cards that can interlock in a million different ways as you please. Go ahead and build yourself a House of Cards however you would like to, you know? I'm not going to tell you what to do next. You can figure it out on your own. This House of Cards approach is something that is not unique to Kerbal. For example, in Hitman, after you beat Hitman the first time, all of the advanced play is literally it giving you challenge cards. 
And you can be like, oh yeah, I could kill that guy while dressed as a, as a surfer, but I can't do this one. I'm not that good. Or you can do it on your own. Like, oh, well, I'm going to do just a rubber ducky run or whatever, right? Whatever you want to try. And the reason it works in Hitman is because Hitman has no planned progression for the player, not past the tutorial sections. It, uh, it has progressions within the game, like, oh, this happens and this happens and this happens. But it doesn't tell the player that they need to participate. The player is free to do whatever the player wants to do and come up with their own objectives. And that means that if it, you know, yeah, sure, we want to kill this guy by standing on that roof. But wait, this challenge says that we have to kill them while dressed as a waiter and we can't get to that roof uh, as a waiter. Wait, this says we have to kill them by pushing them off a bridge. How the heck are we going to get them to a bridge? The game isn't telling you. You have to figure it out on your own. And obviously it's it's something where the game helps you figure it out. It's not completely opaque. But the point here is that the game isn't saying first do A, then do B, then do C, because D is what matters. No, it's saying this is a huge mechanical mess of interlocking parts that you have to navigate your way through. Here are some cues to help you determine what sort of fun things you might want to do within this giant maze of mechanical parts. Of course, Hitman is also not the only thing like that. Uh, we've got a whole bevy of things like Minecraft and Roblox, everything like this. Uh, now, these games are not entirely about construction. Uh, a lot of people just enjoy playing them and not, uh, not building things, and that's fine. There's a big social element as well as just a big performative element. But without the core constructive pieces, these games wouldn't have the wide breadth of content that they have. So these games, even though there are a lot of players that don't use the constructive content, these games have to be built with the House of Cards mechanics in mind so that they can have the levels that the rest of their players like to play. And again, it's all about providing the right cards so that the players can create that interlocking experience without having to just follow along with what the game says they should do. Talk about some things that don't quite make it. You might be playing an RPG. RPG is linear, linear as heck. There's this mission that's happening and we go along it, right? But I want to play it as just the white mage or I want to play it with just the mop. And you might be thinking, those sound like the same kinds of things, right? But it's not a house of cards. The RPG doesn't give you a stack of cards. It's just like some random junk that happens to have been left behind and you're trying to build house of cards out of it. Here's a receipt. Here's a bent fork. Build a house of cards. Obviously, you can build something, but it's not going to be as or ornate or as interesting or have nearly as high a cap as if the game was built around the concept of giving you those self-directed elements. Similarly, there are a lot of games where there's a lot of um, complexity, but there's no self-direction because the vast block of space that you can explore has no meaning outside of what the game tells you to think about today. Uh, Zactronics games are like this. So if you're building a molecule, it can be a lot of fun to put that, that molecule together and try and figure out the best way to, to construct it. Lots of like, you know, 10,000 moving parts and hands and sliders and all sorts of stuff. But this molecule has no meaning to us. This, this molecule, which is the point of the level, is not self-directed because nobody cares. We don't care. The game doesn't care. Nobody cares about this molecule. It's just a challenge that the game comes up with on its, you know, to, to give you. It's hard to play these games self-directed because the things you're creating don't have any meaning. You can't, you can't see why you would want to build a specific kind of thing and you can't revel in having built it. In you know, things like Minecraft, yeah, I want to build a castle because castles inherently have meaning. Or in Hitman, I want to do an all-kung-fu run because I know that it's hard and that has meaning. Um, you know, it's cool to be the kung-fu warrior. Or if you're in Kerbal, you want to land on Elu because you know it exists on the map and therefore it's a place worth going and it has specific characteristics. But the game doesn't say go to Elu. I mean, it can if you're playing it in the wrong mode. It's just that you're allowed to make these decisions about what has meaning because these things have meaning related in relation to each other. The, the Kung Fu mode matters because there are non-Kung Fu modes. The Elu trip matters because there are trips to other places and you know the relative difficulties involved. 
Similarly, if you're playing a game like Space Engineers, you've got the opposite problem. It's easy to give it meaning, but the cards don't exist. They don't interlock properly. So in Space Engineers, there are almost no in-game challenges. If you see someone playing Space Engineers, like just building ships in Space Engineers, they're probably building it based on an outside idea. Like, I'm going to build a Vulcan ship today, or I'm going to build a Star Trek ship, or I'm going to build the biggest ship I can, or whatever it is. But Space Engineers itself doesn't give you the interlocking parts required to have the game world have meaning. Like in Hitman, a big part of why a Kung Fu run would be fun is because of how the levels are set up and how people react to Kung Fu masters. And in uh, Kerbal, the reason why an Elu run is fun is because the, the whole mechanical interaction with Elu makes it have meaning. It's something that exists with very, very specific uh, constraints. Whereas in Space Engineers, the parts and the map don't really interlock. The map is a giant blob of nothing. The parts don't really lock together properly. It's just like the cards aren't sticky. So Space Engineers is like a, a card uh, that is giving you all these cards, but all of the cards are like laminated in oil or something. They're just sliding everywhere. You can't build a house of cards out of them because they just don't stick together. They don't support each other. They don't interlock. So when I think about the House of Cards mechanics, I usually think of it as a two-part situation. You've got to have interlocking parts so that these parts have meaning uh, based on how they interlock and can change and can radically require different approaches if certain values are different. Like, if I go and play Hitman and I have the, the I need to draw this guy off a bridge, well, how do you get him to a bridge? All the parts start to lock together and you're like, oh crap, I've got to, I've got to kind of finagle things. But similarly, they also have to have meaning within the game world. You have, to ha you have to be able to want something. You have to be able to look at the game world and say, yes, that looks interesting. Yes, I want to try that. Just one of these on its own isn't going to let the game properly engage. You have to know where you're going, and you have to have the wheels to get there, if you see what I mean. If you got just the wheels, there's no point. If you can see where you want to go and you can't get there, there's no point. There are lots of mechanics that are very specific to this, but uh, this has been 12 minutes. Um, some basic ones are things like if you want to be able to build something up, you need to be able, you need to have to consider how you're going to support it with another object, stuff, stuff like that. Just basic interlocking traits. Uh, that would be another like half hour to talk about. We can talk about that later or down below. Let me know what you think about this, but keep in mind that the whole point here is that a house of cards gets knocked down. You have to be able to build it up, and you have to be able to knock it down. You have to be able to strive for something and fail. If the game doesn't really allow that in any sort of meaningful sense, it doesn't allow you to grow by doing that, then it just isn't this kind of mechanic. You have to be self-directed, and you have to be stumbling over your own feet, biting off more than you can chew. That's it.